Boy, oh boy, which game should I play? People really like my Yakuza videos, so uh, maybe it's time for me to finally cover Yakuza f Fury. Yakuza Fury. A game that is not about Ada Wong, but instead about a runaway boy called Asuka walking from left to right as he punches people in face. Prepare to fight? Yes. Which prompts you to change your clothing, of which I have none, but it is a prospect I like very much indeed. The same goes for the story and its presentation, lacking voice acting or talent of the directing and writing varieties perhaps, but the music is. Oh. And it has plenty of stereotypical Yankee Yakuza bullshit shit going on which fuels my family jewels. Once the game starts proper though, you'll get a taste of the thick, muddy, molassesy movement and controls. There's also this really great cooldown period after each combo and standing up after a neat ass plant and really generally just doing anything else really feels about as good to do as stapling your butt cheeks together. In either case, you control this disgrace through doing basic combos with square and for what I can only assume to be originality sake, activate your special meter AoE thingy with triangle. Oh, and uh, you can also press X during combo to kick swiftly and circle lets you equip weapons given that you have any. Anyway, after the game events a word... Uh, indissolubly... In indissolubly? 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 Indissoluble. You end up in an open district-like segment where you can fight endlessly spawning dudes and go shopping with the money dropped by said dudes. And uh, I'm gonna be honest here lads, these clothing options are a bit shit. Though they do sell you weapons as well, which helps out a lot with the game's slowness. I mean, the previously mentioned stand-up animations and cooldowns make for a pretty tough time in regards to hitting anyone due to the massive invincibility frames that they contain. And for as far as I can tell at least, there's no way to really dodge or avoid attacks either, so weapons are good for actually making this piece of fucking shit playable through the power of blindly mashing buttons. Though, I'd be remiss to say that this game doesn't have spunk. Hardcore Yakuza fuckboy spunk. Which, somewhere in between Daddy Kazuma, Yosuke, and Jotaro, and just about every other beat em up ever, is something I apparently love uncontrollably. But that's also just about everything the game has. A hidden gem, this is not. It can be fun, sure, just because of the novelty factor alone, and it's also not really offensive or frustrating, but just quite a few acres away from being anywhere near engaging. Like, it doesn't have a central gimmick or a standout mechanic, it is just about the most dry and basic beat-em-up experience out there. And even if there was more to it, I still finished it in under an hour after my character contemplated suicide after murdering his own brother in cold blood. Uh, okay, wait, that, that's, that seems wrong. Let's see here. Five sneaking in the DMs later. Ah, okay, so apparently I wasn't actually meant to use any weapons at all. A fight with honor type of thing requiring you to not get knocked down on your ass and play smart. And, well, I'm not willing to do any of that, so instead why don't you check out my boy Hikiko's video on it, cause maybe there might just be more to this game than meets the eye. Nudge nudge wink wink. So the idea that I had for this show, series, whatever thing, was that besides the first pilot episode where I just cleaned out my closet, every entry would have its own theme. Shit like horror games within the simple series, or sports games from the simple series, and other dumb generic bullshit like that. The only problem was, was that it was pretty hard to find any games that would fit said specific mold. And perhaps much more damningly was that if today's video would have such a theme, it probably would have been imminent rape. So uh, you can see how that was uh, probably a, a, a bit of a bad idea. Have you ever felt the fear of insects scurrying up your skirt, being consumed alive by 100 little chewing furry holes? And do you also fancy yourself as a dainty, brittle Japanese schoolgirl? Well, have I got the game just for you! The Tairyo Jikyogi is a game about being at school alone at night, only to end up in what I can only assume to be a hentai version of Wonderland. 
you know, the uh, Alice one. Quite quickly though, wasps happen and the only thing you can do to defend yourself is awkwardly wave around a stick or squat down street shitter style. Now, I have been told that the title of this game roughly translates to the overwhelming hell and as someone with a pretty severe phobia for all things creepy and or crawly, that is also exactly what I would call this. Either that or my senpai's trip to Australia. That was probably not a very good Australian accent, but but suck my dick. In any case, it is a survival horror game with the puzzles, the clipping on objects, the awkward combat and the camera angles, only then far more fuck than Rule of Rose or Clock Tower 3 could ever hope to be. Red bar is stamina. It uh, pleats as you jump and run, and the Japanese characters appearing on left side of screen indicate buggage. It isn't so much an indicator of how many of them are on your person as it is an easy way to highlight how many have sniffed out your fishy whim. Enter top tier stealth. Completely putting the likes of Splunker Cell and Metal Greer to shame is the Tairyo Kyojukege, or <laughs> whatever, stunning sneaking system in which you tap square to drop down and effortlessly march past all obstacles. Wow! And should you still get bugs up the butt, you can always just kind of spaz out the controller full mong style to shake them off or tactfully smack them to shit with one of the many blunt objects you'll find scattered around the place. The general structure of the overwhelming fuck is as follows. You walk around the school getting stuck on tables looking for the bunny man through his little tune playing from a certain location. Once there, you enter his Crash Bandicoot portal which leads to a level where you avoid or kill bugs, fix up a basic ass puzzle and kill the laughably easy boss. Then it's back to school only to do it all over again. The only real mechanic that it has is the bug anxiety text that slowly builds up as you get more buggos on your tail, kind of forcing you to think about whether or not you'd want to wait it out or run on through. Or <laughs> at least I think that that's the idea as crouching through the entire game seems to work just fine and baseballing them to the other side of a room only seems to be taxing the frame rate <laughs> and not the player. There just isn't really much to it, sadly. I like the idea of combining stealth with Silent Hill as combat, kind of like how what Siren did, but due to the Safari tier soundtrack and the rather goofy and clunky presentation, sneaking past these buggers isn't exactly Metal Gear Solid 3 levels of jungle butt clinch. It's just kind of boring, I guess. Though smashing them up, hearing the splats, crushes and crumbles is somewhat cathartic just on paper alone, but that's not really anything you can carry an entire game on. There aren't like any mechanical differences between the enemies. They don't trigger or interact with each other. They don't require interesting takedown methods. They're just nothing but cannon fodder. At this point, I say that the only thing still able to save this mess would be the puzzles that are very much of the traditional variety. The first one, for instance, involves you taking note of a drawbridge being held up by some rope. And a bit later on, you just so happen to find a shack key and within said shack, there is an axe with which to cut the rope. It's not stunning, but hey, at least it's something. And I mean, with there no doubt being a language barrier for many people, it being as visually well telegraphed as it is, is certainly a good thing. In any case though, it's a neat novelty. Good for perhaps maybe a total of one whole laughs, but very unengaging and far too easy to really recommend at all. It's one of those, if you had to play it kind of things. You can do worse, but you can also do a fuck of a whole lot better. Clearly indicated by it having weapon share ability, <laughs> resulting in me being thrown into a boss fight with absolutely no means of defending myself. Being a genius though, I obviously tried to end it all, but even that wasn't easily done considering how the boss could barely even fucking hit me and by the time that I finally did die, it respawned me right there in the very same room. Fucking cock. <laughs> yep, okay, I'm consider me sold as fuck, boy! <laughs> 
this game's dingy back alley hooker boot style with its cheeky geeky lo-fi 60s spy soundtrack aesthetic is the fucking bomb diggity. And <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck a diggity is other than it being something that rappers used to say when I was like 10 years old. But yo, it fits this game because this game is Mucho Digity. Once it starts, you first jive out to the music, pick an outfit and then choose a stage of which there's only one because the game has just begun. <laughs> Newspapers happen, tension, awkward line pacing, and then gameplay. So, uh, it's a brawler, I guess, where you beat up sleazy looking alley men. If you take damage, though, your clothing will violently explode off of your body, you know, as it typically does. But when that happens, the alley men will also be somewhat enthralled, allowing you to beat them silly once more. When you get your grubby tits mitts on a gun, however, it turns into a first person shooter. <coughs> oh my god, Je Jesus Christ. I nearly died there. The controls in any case are deadass basic bitch, bruh. You go prone with X and attack through vicariously mashing the circle button. Though in a somewhat modern twist, you're also able to fully rotate the camera with the right analog stick, elegantly clipping it into walls, cause fuck man, this entire game is just nothing but tight corridors, not at all fit for a high octane action packed slam fest such as this. To compensate, they've added a mini-map with MGS style vision cones, but without any geometry making it a bit hard to read and thus also as a result by proxy some stealth. Which is about as broken as one might expect. You also clip on a lot of shit and the moment you suffer a wardrobe malfunction, the frame rate promptly shits itself for a full fucking second. And <laughs> that's it really. Linear level shitloads of ludity and lots and lots of alley men waiting to get domed all over the place. For once, one of these things actually lives up to its fucking title by staying really fucking simplistic. It doesn't try to copy any other series, nor does it attempt any type of deeper meaning. It's just a very straightforward man-punching, titty-bouncing simulator with set-punching carrying the bare minimum requirements to be considered satisfactory and as a result it doesn't have too many failings besides the camera. I wouldn't go so far as to recommend it per se, but I can say that as a game it is most certainly okay. Or so I thought! As once I reached level 2, I noticed a stark increase in dude HP, more broken stealth that often ends up forcing you to fight anyway, and a much bigger focus on gunplay. Which has the major fucking problem that your starting aiming point is wherever the camera was pointing and not where your camera was looking, that the aiming is inverted and that the camera is also horribly slow. After that, the fact that dying means getting booted back to the title screen and having to go through all the menus again and so what was once a decently passable has become unhorribly frustrate. Nothing quite like getting stun locked in the narrowest asshole while also not being able to see. Great fucking time! I'm mad salty now, fam. Blech. Against my better judgment, I expected the latter two games to be good, but they were not. Next time though, I'll be shifting the focus back a generation. Only simple PS1 game that I've touched so far was The Sniper, and that one was pretty cool all things considered, so who knows? Maybe the PS1 actually has some good shit. Actually, I, uh, <laughs> I know for a fact that it does, so I think we'll be okay. Mwah. I love you.